We are starting off a brand new game session. Uh, if you have listened to the sessions of Dowrath's Return, of which there were more than 80 uh, videos on YouTube, um, <clears throat> we're starting off the same world. Uh, the setting will be very familiar as we're starting out in Nordgard. Um, however, it is several hundred years in the future from uh, the previous campaign, so most of the characters that you grew to uh, know and love are long gone now, and we're starting out with a new cast of characters. And on this particular fateful day, we have two characters coming down the northern road towards Nordgard's uh, northwest gate. Uh, there is... Um, well, you guys can introduce yourselves. Mike, you want to go first? Yeah. I guess I want to because there was a yeah there. Um, I am Ulnan Reef Smasher, a uh, fairly nondescript half-elf. Uh, and I'm playing Old Nell, a very old, beaten-up drow. Oh, interesting. Yep. And these two uh, found each other up in the Brightwood, far to the north, and have made their way south with a cart and a couple of mules um, as they make their way to Nordgard. They're together? Yes, they've been traveling companions for some time now. Intriguing. Um, for Olnen, uh, would you like to share what you have, the information that you've shared with Old Nell? about why you're going to Nordgard? Old Nell has been made aware that I am traveling um, from a region in which aquatic elves had been, and that they are planning an attack on the ancient dam to the north of Nordgard, uh, looking to destroy it. And I'm on my way to warn people and stop this from happening. And Old Nell, uh, is there any information about your past that you've shared um, or any uh, reasons for going to Nordgard that you've shared with Olman? Uh, they've been traveling together for a little bit, so Old Nell would have told him that, you know, he doesn't really remember much of his past. He just remembers waking up in the in the woods one day and that he was cared for by a enigmatic figure that he refers to as the the angel in the woods and that she told him to head south towards Nordgard and just to do good. Um, and with that sort of, you know, broad, broad goal in mind, uh, old Nell is just, uh, you know, the, the two of them, when they met on the road, he sort of picked up Olman and they've, uh, they've been together ever since riding with our, our cart and two mules. That will have actually led to many interesting conversations for, I also was, um, he's very vague about it, was also approached by an entity in the woods uh, that told me to travel to Nordgard and do good. Oh, yeah. And, and did you share any more info about that entity? I did not. Did you share any more about your entity? Uh, she's a beautiful angel in the woods that uh, that helped me get over about a sickness. Um, I mean, I don't know if... if Olnen is being cagey, Old Nell wouldn't pry. Would Olnen pry into Old Nell's past? I suppose, Ryan, uh, even though we've both written our own backstories, how similar are these? Um, not really. Uh, they're, they're quite different. Just what he was describing as an angelic figure and mine being a celestial it seems that there's the potential for some gray overlap in that. I can see why you'd think that. I have missed that <laughs> phrase from you, Ryan. So I suspect we've had enough conversation to be able to establish that what's mine is not his, and what's his is not mine. Okay, that's fair. And with that in mind, as we're looking at the city coming into view, I think Old Nell is just sort of like hunched up a little bit, pulling his cloak around his features, just sort of obscuring his face. And uh, and he'll just say to old men, uh, now we're just going to go take a look there, lad. If they uh, if they don't let us in, we'll, we'll figure out some other plan. But uh, just play it cool, you know? 
no no point in going in guns blazing or or getting ourselves into trouble so let us in we're good sure lad sure all right um so as you guys approach uh down the road you do see um in the er it's still fairly early in the morning at this point um but you do see a lineup at the gatehouse um there's uh several carts laden with goods uh, waiting to enter the city and there's uh there's guards at the gates that are uh checking the wagons as uh as they approach um you do see uh, rather curiously that uh there's uh, appears to be a custom here where if it's uh, a cart with loose goods uh, like grains or hay or something like that, they uh, the guards are armed with pitchforks, which they stab into the wagons um, as a precaution. Hold over from a few years ago. A little bit, yeah. And then we'll get ever so slightly wide-eyed at seeing that. Cool, blimey, they take their smuggling serious around here, I guess. So the, uh, the wagons and carts continue on into the city. Um, you do note that uh, most of the, the carts around you are bringing in uh, goods from outlying fields, and uh, it, you get up to the gate, and one of the guards waves you forward and says, What's your business in Nordgard today? We're here for the festivities. I, I, they're already starting by the sounds of it in the city. Um, what, uh, what goods are you bringing in? Got nothing, mate. Looking to fill up on the way out. Ah, all right. That's, uh, good to hear. Um, what, uh, what sorts of goods are you looking to buy while you're in town? Bit of this, bit of that. How's the year's brew? It's mighty fine from, uh, the, the tasting that I had last night. Ripper. Uh, are you familiar with Nordgard? First time visiting, mate. All right. Um, well, if you're looking for goods, uh, you'll head through the gatehouse here. There's uh, large barracks uh, kind of in the road. You can go around that and uh, just continue on uh, the south road to the east. Uh, you can't miss the market. You'll see the stadium uh, off in the distance a bit. Uh, but uh, you'll be able to find anything you need in that area, I'm sure. Thank you for the guidance, sir. My pleasure. Welcome to Nordgard. And with a gentle little flick of the reins, we'll drive right in, smooth as butter. All right. Uh, where are you planning on heading uh, once you're in town? I mean, Olin, you said you were looking to uh, to warn anybody that, that there's a, an attack happening on a dam. So do you know anything about this town? Just what I've heard in my travels. I've never been here. I mean, Old Nell would suggest that we could try and find a, a public house or a local and try to, you know, pump somebody for information about who runs the joint. Being not locals, what would we know about the history of uh, Nordgard? Uh, you can give me some uh, history checks. <laughs> yeah, Olnen, you don't know anything about Nordgard. That is most excellent. I mean, the dice roll said I was good, but I, given my backstory, I don't think I know much. Oh, your roll just came through. Yeah, an 18, because you guys are from so far north, <clears throat> uh, I was looking for a 20 there. Um, but uh, yeah, so Old Nell, other than uh, how to find it and uh, some very, very basic information, um, you don't... Uh, really have a lot of uh, a lot else on it. Um. Well, what if we hail a nearby passerby and just yell, "Oi, mate! Where can we go to get a bit of pint of bitter and a bit of scoff?" Oh, you're looking for a drink. You're gonna want to head down to the market. There's a, a, a brewery there. They got the best drinks in town. You won't be disappointed. Uh, does it sound good to Olman? Sounds good to me. <clears throat> Seems to me we need to find someone who is important enough that they'll maybe be able to point us in a direction and unimportant enough that they might actually take what I'm saying seriously. Well, mate, it's also important that we just look after ourselves. 
don't want the crowds going wild once they catch a deco at our handsome mugs, you know? Let's, uh, let's head on down to the public house and see what we can find. And I guess we'll head to the, is that the Western Market at 26? Yep. Okay. Um, so you guys start making your way down there. I'm going to switch gears to uh, Deacon. Um, so Mark, uh, Deacon has come to town to uh, enjoy the, uh, the harvest festivities. Uh, you're from down south, uh, as I recall. Um, not super far south, but uh, more like the uh, ranch uh, territories outside of Nordgard's influence um so uh you are already in the western market as uh you see a, a lot of people uh, partaking uh there's a, a brewery uh, just to the east of uh, your position there's a a large old temple uh, to the north that uh, appears to be in rather rough shape um, and uh, a host of other uh, market buildings in the area. Um, but most people seem to be frequenting the brewery. All right. Uh, I would definitely be heading over there, especially if there's a crowd. Yeah, the, I mean, the, the whole area is pretty crowded. Uh, a lot of people are getting their drinks and then taking them elsewhere, uh, just kind of wandering around, uh, looking at wares that people are bringing in from, from out of town and also uh, looking for good deals on things that uh, the, the local craftsmen work on. Um, so there's a, a lot going on. Um, but yeah, there, there's certainly a crowd at the brewery if uh, that's where you want to head. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be heading over there. And is this brewery, is it like a, like a tavern or just they just sell, you know, kegs of beer? Um, they have kegs available, but they've also got, uh, pints on tap. Um, not a lot of seating room inside right now. Uh, so a lot of, that's why a lot of people are kind of getting their drinks and then, uh, heading back out into the, the square and, uh, enjoying their drinks and in, in crowds, just kind of milling about. All right. I would definitely head over there, get myself a pint and I would probably just hang out like, uh, people watching. And uh, I'm, I, I particularly look for odd looking folk, uh, you know, people from people from out of town. Um, I'm interested in, in talking to them. OK, um, so Nordgard is a very diverse uh, city, um, so it might be hard to tell at a glance. Um, but uh, for the most part, uh, you're seeing uh, humans and halflings and gnomes and orcs and goblins um, all uh, living together and uh, intermingling like there's no um, divisions in the society. Uh, you know, it's it's common to see all of them uh, interacting with each other. Uh, can you give me a perception check, please? Seems likely. Oops, sorry, I clicked it twice. That's okay, we'll use the first one. Um, so yeah, you've got an 18. Uh, that's really, really good. Uh, so I'm going to say that you do see a couple of people with their cloaks pulled up. They've got an empty cart being uh, brought in your direction with a couple of mules, um, and they they've got they've got a look about them that says that uh, they're uh, the, the the way they're they're kind of shifting around, looking around. It looks like they're probably not from here. I will definitely go and approach them uh, with my drink, um, and I'll I'll come up casually on them, and uh, and I'll say, uh, "Hey, fellas, where are you from?" So, what do we see standing before us? Ah, you see this this uh, rough and tumble human, uh, you know, weather beaten from the road. Uh, he's wearing a wide brimmed hat. He's got a chain shirt on, uh, with a red poncho over top, uh, wearing you know, brown leather pants, um, and belted on his hips, he's got two hand crossbows. Um, think, think McCree from Overwatch. Well, then I think the two hooded figures are going to check each other and, uh, and just respond with, Hither and yon, friend, where are you from? Oh, I'm from down south, but uh, just wondering, I've been looking for this fella, 
he's got a, a shock of flame and red hair and a, and a, and a nasty look about him. You ever seen a guy like that? Does he have a name? All I know is he's called Shades. Well, we're brand new in town ourselves, mate. But uh, you know, why don't you uh, why don't you sit down with us for a minute, and why, why don't we talk a little bit? You know, we're we're trying to get our feet under us and figure out the lay of the land ourselves. If uh, if you're brand new around these parts, maybe we ought to flock together. Sounds like a fine idea to me. Can I uh, can I buy you a beer at the at the brewery over there? Well, ain't you a bloke? Uh, yes, please. All right, I would proceed to uh, lead them to the brewery and and buy them each a beer. All right, no problem. It's only a couple of copper uh, per pint, uh, so it's not going to break the bank account or anything. Um, and you guys each have drink to enjoy. So, uh, what brings you guys into this town? Just here to do some good, mate. That pretty much sums it up for me too. Well, sounds like we might have a common purpose then. I. I uh, I have some some things that I'd like to set straight, and and I don't mind doing a little good. You guys know of any uh, any work around this part? Well, this man you're looking for, is there a price on his head? I would sure love there to be. I've been uh, I just got into town myself, so uh, I haven't been able to to find where I might figure that out yet. I'll be honest, mate. We're we're just brand new ourselves, and. I'm just trying to get the lay of the land, although my friend here, elbowing Olin a little bit, is is maybe looking to to talk to somebody a little bit important. If uh, if you've got a lead on a criminal, maybe we take him down. Maybe we get ourselves a a little conversation with the powers that be. This person Sounds you're looking for is me. a criminal, right? Oh, most certainly. Uh, wanted for murder. Well, why don't we? Uh... Why don't we ask this barkeep here, see if we can figure out uh, who we should be talking to. And I'll, I'll walk up to uh, who's ever serving the drinks and uh, I'll say, hey, is there any work around here for a bounty hunter? Oh, no, nothing like that around here today. No, uh, today's all about celebrating. No hunting or killing. Yeah. All right, then. They're, they're like a sheriff in town we can uh, maybe, maybe have a word with. Oh, there's uh, uh, Chief, Chief Liliana Fluff. She's uh, over on the other end of town. Um, uh, uh, you know, you'll you'll find some officers of hers uh, wandering around these parts, but uh, that's that's where she'd be. And I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of glance over at at uh, my my two new compatriots and and just kind of give like a, a side uh, like a cockeyed like uh, what do you think? Um, old Nell is actually going to lean up to the bar and just sort of speaking from behind his hood, he's going to try and thieves can't, um, you know, uh, someone could go to unload some hot goods there, mate. And does that get any reaction from the barkeep? Uh, give me an insight check. <laughs> uh, yeah, you don't get uh, a good read on him. Uh, but he does say, um, that he hears uh, good things about the uh, lock and key in, um, as well as uh, yeah, there's there's a few places down in uh, the southern part of town on the other side of the river where uh, you might be able to find some fun. And we are currently where again? You are on the west side of town, uh, kind of in the northern part. So it'll be. Uh, uh, a bit of travel to to get there. Did did the barkeep respond in Thieves' Cant, or was he just talking? He was just talking. Um, he didn't uh, didn't respond in Thieves' Cant. No. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of look over at Old Nell questioningly. Uh, he's just gonna thank the barkeep and uh, and gently usher you guys away from the bar, and then he's gonna say, uh, "If we're looking for rough folks, it's I think that the lock and key in or the southern end of the city might be a good place to start. Have a little deco. Sounds like a fine idea to me. Um, Deacon, you would know that uh, to get to the other side of town, you'd have to go uh, northeast first uh, along that road and then east because uh, there's a couple of main bridges that cross the river, and that's the only way across to the other side of town. All right. Well, I guess, fellas, if that's where we want to go, 
Uh, I do know my way over there. We got to head up northeast, and there's a bridge across this uh, water. If that's the way we're heading, we should head that way. Then I'll uh, I'll lead us up over to the words of the bridge. We'll follow and navigate there with the mule cart. Uh, Ryan, one more time. What was the name of that guard captain that the innkeeper had mentioned? Uh, Liliana Fluff. I'm just moving your tokens along through the city on the path uh, that you would take. And uh, as you get to uh, the large bridge that crosses the river, um, <clears throat> Olnen, uh, you can see clearly up the way uh, the dam that uh, you were told about where the attack would happen. So is the dam at the wall or is it north of the wall it's uh it looks like it's an extension of the wall um like there's two there's a tower on either side of it um and then on the other side of the tower the walls uh, continue around the city so that is the dam yes okay and at a distance you can see that it is uh, of different construction than the walls around it uh, the stone uh, color is different um, the style is different. Uh, it just it looks out of place. When we are making our way towards across the bridge, is there any signage that indicates that this building is City Hall? Uh, yes, and there are guards posted outside as well. I am going to actually approach one of the guards as we um, as we get towards the end of the bridge. Okay. Excuse me, sir. I uh, I don't mean to bother, but I I have a I have a question for you. Of course. Um, I understand from your your position and your demeanor that you would be um, a guard. Um, if I were hoping to um, make a report of a of a potential concern. Um, where would I go? Well, any guard in the city uh, works for the city, of course. So if you could tell me. I fear that it is of a somewhat delicate nature. And I would rather not have to repeat it more than is necessary. Um, would you... Are you I, questioning my integrity, sir? I am absolutely not questioning your integrity, sir. It is a simple case of of the more I tell the story, the more chances that I make an error in what I am relaying. And I am trying to dump persuasion into this. Okay. Uh, you can give me a persuasion check. For frick's sake. <laughs> So you see him make a subtle motion and uh, a couple more guards come from um, the distance. They're making their way slowly. It's not like they're, they're rushing over, uh, but you've certainly attracted attention. Um, and uh, the first guard says, I'm a guard at City Hall here. Uh, it's an important post. Uh, if you have news to share, you can certainly share with me. And just make sure that you speak carefully and uh, don't mix up any of your details. All right, then. Uh, I am a merchant from a northern town. And, and I, have, I have spent most of my life traveling. And in my travels, I have been aware, made aware, that there is a plot to damage the dam to our north here. And I point. He, um, so first off, is that true? Or are you deceiving him by saying it, that you're a merchant? Uh, I have been a merchant for a very long time. And that part is true. Okay. Um, well, then he, he follows uh, where you're pointing at. And he looks back at you kind of incredulously and says... A dam? That thing's older than... Uh, I, I think it's older than the whole city. Uh, that, that thing's been there forever. There, why would anyone want to 
try to break it. I'm I'm pretty sure it's magical, uh, according to to rumors I've heard around town. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to to try to break something magic. Well, if you were to look at it, that it is one of the hallmarks of the civilization of Nordgard. And one was wanting to wreak havoc upon the said civilization of Nordgard. Would they have a better way to start that process than destroy that which has been here as long as anyone can remember? and holds the forces of nature at bay. Hmm. Huh. Well, you're talking a lot of sense. I'll tell you what. We've always got guards posted on that thing, uh, more to keep a, a lookout on the Brightwood than anything else. But uh, if you want to head up there, and give them a warning so they can keep their eyes out for any kind of attack. Um, maybe they'll do double... Double guard posts for a bit and uh, make sure it stays safe. What will be the best way to get there, sir? Uh, you're going to want to continue across uh, this island here, across the next bridge, and then uh, head north. Um, there's uh, access to the, the dam up there. So north of the library? Yeah. I understand what I'm relaying seems somewhat far-fetched, but I felt I would be remiss in not uh, reporting it and allowing those that are vigilant of the safety of Nordgard to potentially be vigilant of this possible threat. I appreciate uh, the warning. I can't imagine anything able to damage that old dam, but better safe than sorry. On your way, citizen. I will give a very slight nod, and I will look to the people I'm traveling with. Uh, have uh, we walked away from the guards? Um, yeah, you can... Uh, the, the the guards have, have left you guys alone at this point. Okay. Out of earshot of the guards, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look over at, at uh, my companions and be like, Oh, those damn lawmen. Lazy bastards. Well, if you're out hunting bounties, mate, doesn't that make you something of a lawman yourself? No, nah, I'm just trying to bring criminals to justice. Uh, I'm not really doing it for any other reason other than I, I need them bad guys gone. Could, could I insight that? Sure. How does a 19 feel like? I guess what I'm trying to suss out is, okay, you want the bad guys gone. Are you a bad guy? Is, is kind of what I'm trying to suss out here. Um, well, that's, uh, I'll leave that up to Mark to, to say. Um, that's a really good insight role. So um, I'd say that you've you're got a pretty good read on him. Uh, what I said was genuine. So, like, I, I guess the sense you get is that, that I'm actually just trying to get rid of the bad people. And you're not a bad person yourself. Nope. Okay, fair. All right. Um, so you guys are uh, continuing on to the dam then? Yeah, we'll take a detour to the dam. All right. Um, one moment, please. All right. Uh, so you guys are heading up towards the dam. And uh, you see the most curious thing um, right at the edge of the dam where it is still the uh, the older type of construction is kind of built into the tower. Uh, you see for a moment uh, magical lights, um, kind of like a fairy fire, uh, dance around the stonework in a, a, an archway kind of pattern. And out from solid stone walks this small gnomish woman. And then the fairy lights go out, and uh, Tia, you are finding yourself in a brand new world that you've never been in before. Um, and you see three figures walking towards you, 
Uh, they've got a cart with a couple of mules. And everything is brand new. Uh, she'll take a few steps. Do they seem... How, what do they look like? And I... Because I know the description. So they look a little perhaps rougher than she's frequently experienced, perhaps. Definitely. Have they seen her? Um, what are your passive perceptions, guys? Like, I mean, well, I described it. There's fairy fire and stuff that would have drawn your eyes to the area. So, yes, they have definitely seen you. Um, hello? She'll take I a couple will, steps uh, forward. I will, uh, I will approach, uh, approach Tia with a, with a slightly amused smile, and I'll say, well, hello there, little lady. Hi, who are you? And, and is this Nordgard? Well, indeed it is. My name is Deacon. Hi, Deacon. Um, you can call me Tia. Well, it is a pleasure, and I, and I reach out to, to shake her hand, but I'm a little bit, uh, uh, worried about, like, hurting her because she's so small, so I'm, like, gingerly shaking her. She's a little hesitant, but we'll let you do that. And when you don't seem to do any harm, she relaxes a little bit. Um, I, I'm just new to Nordgard. Well, welcome to the club. So are the three of us. Oh, really? What are you in Nordgard for? Oh, well, I'm just, just looking for, for someone in particular. Haven't been able to find him in a while, so need to catch up, you know? A friend? Oh, I wouldn't call him a friend. Uh, we, we have a score to settle, if you know what I mean. Oh goodness, yes I do. Well, I'm I'm here doing some exploring myself. Well, you must be mighty fine at that with that cool trick you just pulled there coming through that wall. I'm not exactly sure what you saw, but I didn't come through a wall. If you say so. I do, I just did. He he's going to chuckle and and uh say, "Well, all right then." Now, these here are my new friends. We've got uh we've got Olnin and and Old Nell. Uh, hello, and hello, Elder. Good day, Sheila. No, you can call me Tia. Cool, blimey, ain't you a posh geezer. Ms. Tia it is, then. Okay. Would you know of a good place to stay in, Nordgard? I think once I'm done talking to the guards here, I suspect that that is going to be on our list of... of information that we are hoping to acquire shortly. Uh, would you like to join us while we explore this city that is new to all of us? You're searching for things here. That seems like that would be helpful for me. So yes. Is there a door on the wall here, Ryan? <laughs> I just realized I forgot to put one in. I'm about to put one in now. There we go. Now there's a door. Uh, there are other doors uh, that I've put in. Um, but yeah, so there's a door here. I am going to start heading towards said door. Are there any guards outside of it? Nope. I'm going to give it a knock because I'm, I wasn't born in a barn. All right. Uh, nobody answers. And I'm going to say, well, I was. And I'll just open the door. <laughs> okay. Uh, so inside, it's uh, a large open space, um, and uh, to the northwest, uh, you see another door uh, that you figure would take you out onto the uh, dam itself. And there's nobody in here. Um, it, there are natural windows that allow the morning sun to illuminate the area, but uh, other than that, nothing. And, and is this stairs? Um, you can just ignore the stairs because um, I like those are hugely oversized. It was just part of the tower that I plunked in. Um, okay, I'm going to continue towards the next door that is open or next door that is available to us. And this is the scale of this 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 dam we're in. Is is, is this? Yeah, it's massive. And I guess seeing as. Uh, how the last door went, I'm just going to check if it's open and head through. Yep, it's open. Uh, no problem there. Uh, so as you head out onto uh, the top of the dam, uh, you do see that there's uh, a couple of guards posted on it. Um, they don't seem to be paying particularly close attention to anything. Um, just kind of standing around, looking around. 
and it uh, it takes a bit for uh, the one closest to you to even notice that you're there. Um, like you get probably about halfway up to him before he sees you. And that's this one. Yep. Tell you what, could I roll a stealth roll and try to make it all the way up to him? Sure. Hello. He literally can't see you. So, yeah, so yeah. his his attention oh. is on the other three, and he doesn't even notice as you kind of come around the other side. I'm I'm not doing nothing. I'm just hanging out behind him, waiting waiting for you guys to make a move. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Um. Uh, come for a tour of uh, the river wall, I suppose. Uh, came to look at the river wall, um, and to um. Ask you some questions, I guess. All right. Um, well, I don't have much else going on right now. I'm happy to answer some questions for you. So, what do you know about goings on north of this wall? Well, along the river. Well, that's why I'm posted here. You know, get the odd. Uh, you know, critter or something that uh, comes down from the Brightwood and got to alert the rest of the guards in town, man the walls, that sort of thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, for the most part, it's a pretty quiet post. Uh, not, not too many, uh, you know, smart threats are coming down this way. It's more like a mindless monster or something that uh, just comes too far south. But uh, most know to stay away from Nordgard, so we don't get a whole lot of trouble. So you haven't seen much in the way of orcs or the like? I'm assuming you're talking about uh, the orcs uh, in the Brightwood and not uh, not the orcs that live in Nordgard. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, uh, they tend not to come down this far. They're pretty happy up in their uh, woodland home, I guess. And... Hypothetically speaking, what if they weren't? Well, uh, he kind of waves to everything around you and says, "Well, if they uh, if they wanted to come uh, pick a fight with Nordgard, you can see that uh, we've got real good walls, lots of defenders in the city. It's would be a real terrible time to attack. What with that uh, being the Harvest Festival tonight." Uh, the town's going to be loaded with people who uh, would be able to defend it. So uh, it'd be uh, a might bit foolish to attack Nordgard today. I have been a merchant in the north. Is is he a human? Is he? Does he appear to be a human? At least part human, yeah. I have been a merchant longer than, I won't assume you, but longer than a number of your family have been alive um and in my travels of the north i have found things are quiet and things are peaceful and then not so long ago i started hearing rumblings of attacking nordgard and that attack was going to start right here where we stand that the attack was going to be upon this dam to, I suspect, bring this dam down, which would cause flooding and chaos and death, regardless of how many defenders were in the city past these walls. Oh, that does sound like trouble. Uh, any idea when this attack would be coming? And you see he starts uh, looking at, at, the, at the wall and kind of walks up onto it, but he's still clearly listening to you, but he's uh, taking a look out over the river. Do I have a time frame of when I started hearing those rumblings? And in hearing those rumblings, was there a time frame given on when it was going to potentially happen? Um, the rumblings that you would have heard uh, would have been the reason that you headed south as quickly as you did, um, because the attack is imminent. So it would not be an. Um, it would not be a. While potentially still incorrect, it would not be a faulty assumption to assume that it would be at some point during the festivities. Yeah, it's, uh, it could happen at any time. Um, but the guard looks out over the water and he says, 
Well, I don't see uh, anything out there right now. No signs of any orcs or such. It's not just the orcs you need to worry about, though. That's part of the problem. Who else am I worrying about? The aquatic elves. Aquatic elves? I didn't even know there was such a thing. What, why, what kind of problem would they have with Nordgard? They, they are primarily off the coast, but they have sided with the orcs. Oh, man, here I thought elves were good types. Well, I'll, uh, I'll post some extra guards um, on the wall. I'll keep an eye out. Um, now, these, these uh, what do you call them, aquatic elves? Are they, uh, uh, are they like they sound? Do they, do they live in the water, or is, is that a name because they live on a coastline close to water? Some, some of each. Some are as comfortable in the water as they are on land. Some prefer to be on land over the water. It is, it is tricky to successfully generalize them. I uh, see. Well, um, I really appreciate the warning that you've given me. Um... We do take the security of the city very seriously. So uh, thank you very much. Um, if, uh, if this news does help us defend Nordgard, of course you'd be um, right to, to be getting a reward for this information. If, attack, if an attack were to happen that took out this dam, helping in the sparing of the lives that would potentially be lost in that circumstances. It sounds crass, but is payment enough? Um, if the information I've given you potentially helps that from not happening, I'm, I'm glad to have helped. And as you say this, the whole world explodes. Oh, come on. <laughs> Um, I'm not going to bother getting you guys to roll deck saves because the amount of damage in the awful explosion is enough to destroy all of you instantly. You feel no pain as an explosion tears through the dam. Huge chunks of stone fly out in all directions into the river, and the dam is... Obliterated. Sorry, this is I an killed unexpected us all. Shortest game ever. Good luck, Shane. It's up to you now. <sighs> Shane may have stepped away momentarily. <laughs> yeah, he just said BRB. Oh, he's listening. Okay. So we're going to wind back time a little bit here. And in the city of Nordgard, in a, a narrow alleyway um, a, a sphere of electric energy grows and erupts disrupting the air and surroundings and when it disappears there's a naked man crouched where it had been Shane would you like to introduce your character <sighs> oh, sorry I had to run back to the to the keyboard so that I could uh uh, push to talk here. Ermagerd, he's a Terminator. <laughs> uh, he will stand up, um, look around uh, the... Where is he? Sorry? Um, you are in the uh, northern part of Nordgard, uh, close to the library, in kind of the, the nobles' housing district, but there's a narrow alleyway there where uh, nobody would have seen you appear. Okay. Uh, and is that the case? He will immediately uh, look around and uh, scan his surroundings to see if anybody has seen him come in. Okay. Uh, can I get a uh, perception check, please? Okay. Uh, my passive is 13, and I'm just about to roll perception. All right. Um, you take a look around your surroundings. There's nobody in the immediate area. 
um, but you are close enough to the uh, exit of the alley that you can see uh, across the open lands to the north. And you can see three figures heading north towards the, uh, the dam on the river, which is uh, intact at this time. All right. I will... Uh, okay, and that's the only people I see? Yes. Okay. Um, I will begin walking towards them uh, purposefully with no shame whatsoever. Okay. Um, as you make your way, uh, you see that they do approach the dam. They haven't noticed you. Um, and ahead, you see a ring of fairy lights appear. And um, your target, the, uh, the small gnomish woman, emerges from the fairy ring before it winks out. He will will shift targets like he was walking for the three people and as soon as he sees his target he will shift like 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 a machine to like walking towards her with purpose uh and describing my character um as he's walking up uh he's totally naked and uh um uh he is uh has black hair he's tall uh he's got a you know rippling muscles and um and a a gaze that just does not waver and um he's walking towards he walks up to uh uh tia is it well you haven't been introduced yet oh yeah but i'm just saying like out of character tia sure Uh, yeah and says when i have come for you Excuse my really bad accent. <laughs> she <laughs> looked shocked. Shocked. Who are you? Is that what she says? Or Yeah. That does not matter. What matters is that you survive. I am here to make sure that you survive. This place is not safe. We must leave now. <sighs> okay. Strain. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> she is totally flummoxed. There's no time for processing. We must go now. And he reaches out and grabs her. And he says, excuse me, we must go. And he starts to, if, you know, gently lead her away from uh, the three people that he doesn't care about. She Um, may scream for help. (laughs) Yeah, I I think old Nell is just going to, uh, you know, sort of shove Deacon in front of your path and, and be like, Oi, mate, hang on a minute. What, what's all this then? And I would step in the path, like, as you're, as you're pushing me, I would step right in front and say... I he says it's here, dangerous. I am here from the future to protect you from the future. <laughs> God, I'm so bad at this. You know what? <laughs> that is enough to actually make Win go willingly. At least enough to make Tia go willingly. This is enough... She's like, I don't know what's going on, but he says there's danger. Let's sort it out away from here. And he, uh, um, as he's leading you away, he's scanning the uh, horizon for potential um, uh, threats, Um, largely ignoring the three that may be kind of coming after us. He'll say, uh, how much do I know about the threat, the immediate threat? Um, You know that this is... uh the day and roughly time when uh, she dies. Um, You don't know anything about anybody else that was caught up in the situation, um, but you know that she was obliterated utterly in the destruction of the dam. Uh, Okay, so I do know that the dam is in danger and is going to blow up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, The dam, it's going to blow. We need to get you out of the city as quickly as possible before the floodwaters take us out. But can can we stop it? According to your uh, internal clock, um, the explosion is still uh, a few minutes off. Uh, so you don't know what caused the explosion, um, but by your calculations, you would be able to arrive uh, at the area before the explosion happens. 
the probability of successfully navigating the explosion is lower than the probability of success if I get you out of the city. I think it is important that we leave the city to its fate and get you to safety. Oh my god, I'm so bad at Arnie. And just like <laughs> you're this, doing great. You're doing great, Shane. <laughs> and just like this, Michael has an opportunity for a reroll on his character. What? I would like to be running in to tell those guards it's about to happen, that it is imminent, and that will lead to me dying in the explosion. Hmm. All right. Um, Olin, you can uh, double time it, uh, since you know that the explosion is about to happen, uh, so you can get adequate warning. After a moment's hesitation, old Mel would follow him. He he came in with Olin. He's not going to leave without him. Uh, Tia's going to turn to this unusual stranger and say, can we save them? A probability still exists for saving the city. I just don't believe it is this course of action that will successfully navigate you living for the future of humanity. Um, um, I, I stop in my tracks as what he just said sinks in. Where's the explosion happen? Uh, how much do I know about the location of the explosion? You would know that it rips the dam right in half. The the explosion is in the is in the dam in the middle of the dam. You must run. And and you would know that the explosion uh, originated below the dam. Uh, it wasn't like internal to the dam. It was underneath and blew everything straight up. Oh. Did we did we die in the did we effectively die in the explosion? And then there was a rewind that we haven't been through that experience yet. Yes. So you guys haven't even had time to have proper introductions with Tia or anything. You saw her come through, and then this weird naked guy came walking up <laughs> saying that he needed to save her. But he did say that the dam was about to go explode, which, if that's enough to cue Olnen, Old Nell is following you. So up to you, Mike. No pressure. Deacon's gonna gonna step in as you're as you're turning and say, I don't know what's going on here. But if you really do want to save people, I don't think you're going to do any good by getting yourself killed. Um, on the inside of the dam, there's the boat and the dock. Are there any causeways under the dam, like where the water would flow through? Uh, yes. Uh, what had at first looked like a dam from far off, you can see that uh, it's not actually stopping water from flowing at all. Um, there appears to be some space underneath um, with grating, and uh, the water flows from one side to the other. It's time to go. We have to go now. You are in danger. Ryan, would she think she had any chance of actually stopping anything here? She's not about to die for no reason. Um, well, the, the, the Terminator uh, has, uh, has told you that there is a chance. Um, as as slim as it may be, um, but uh, that there is a chance to to stop this from happening. She's going to turn to him and say, "You want to help? You want to save me? Come with me and help do it." What do you insist on not going? Oh no! And he turns and he goes, "Stay here!" And he runs, starts running into the uh, dam. She'll follow because you know. All right. Uh, so you guys double time it. I'm um, I'm actually <laughs> running. Yeah, I don't know if into the dam makes sense if we think it explodes from under. Yeah, I am actually running for the shoreline. Is there any, like, access to the uh, sluiceways or whatever they're called? Um, not really, no. It's uh, it's going to be swimming and, uh, yeah. Well, okay. okay, then he starts, then if you, knowing that, he'll start running for the water, then... Anyone with a high enough passive perception is going to hear uh, Ullman swearing rather profusely under his breath as he's ripping his cloak off. Deacon's going to say, oh, hell, and just uh, run after you guys. Um, uh, Old Nell's going to split off and is going to be running up for the top of the dam. Okay. Uh, you guys will notice that as you sw hit the water and start swimming, um, uh, my character uh, just like goes down <laughs> just basically doesn't swim 
that just walks along the bottom of the or runs as much as he can around the bottom of the of the water. <laughs> okay. I, I have a quick question, Ryan. I have reconfigured my token so that it's Ulnan and not Lignic, and I can't move me now. Oh, where are you? Because okay. under under the players on the left hand side, we still all have our old names, and I changed it so I had my current name. Oh, and it changed. And it looks like it changed the permissions because it looks like the token it was pointing at, even though it was with my information, it was pointing at Lignic. Interesting. Okay, let me see if I can sort this out for you. And yeah, my 30-foot move swimming speed is going to kick in (laughs) as soon as I hit the water. Can you move that one? Yeah. Perfect. Okay, yeah, so you will quickly outpace... Uh, everybody else. Oh, this is this is interesting though. I can't move it dragging it. I can move it using my keyboard though. Oh, that's very strange. Weird. Um. So, oh, are you in the on the right tool on the left hand side? Like, are you on the measuring tool? Oh, thank you. I'm a silly. I'm <laughs> a silly. <laughs> uh, good to have that figured out. All right. Uh, so old now. Um, since you're running on land, uh, you'll be able to get up to the where you are before anybody else can swim to where they're going. Uh, what are you doing? Uh, clutching at a stitch in his side, he is going to drop all pretense at the skies. Is going to sweep his cloak back, revealing his his dark ashen skin, his uh, his shock white hair, and he's going to yell, "Evacuate the dam!" Get clear, you drongos. It's all gonna blow. Uh, can you give me a persuasion check, please? Not bad. Yeah, that's really good. Um, the guard uh, looks at you and says, What's this? The the dam's gonna blow? You're Do under you... attack. It's all going up. You're gonna die. Get clear of the dam, you fools. He yells uh, across the dam to the other guard. He's like, Get out of here! Something bad's going to happen. And uh, the other guard runs into the other tower, and this one starts heading towards the tower that you came from. Uh, what else are you going to do? Uh, run to the edge and gracefully swan dive off. Uh, looking over the edge first, like, does it look like I can dive into the water below? or? Yep, the water looks uh, looks nice. It's a, it's a deep, wide river, um, so no problem there. Yep, diving into the water on this side. Okay, yeah. um, so you, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna place everybody where you are right now before I uh, continue to describe the situation. Um, so uh, for swimming, uh, you can move half your movement speed to swim, um, <clears throat> and uh, as you get underneath the river wall, uh, there's not a lot of uh, room between the, the the waves and the the wall, uh, so you're not going to be able to go up for breath, um, which means that I have to look up the rules for holding your breath underwater. Uh, you can hold your breath for um, a number of minutes equal to one plus your constitution modifier. Do I have to breathe? Uh, I don't think so. Warforge does not. Well, there you go. And once you once you run out of air, you can survive for a number of rounds equal to your uh, constitution modifier uh, before you die. So you guys are in about these positions. Uh, I'm going to open up the uh, combat tracker. Ooh. Wow. Uh, so we're just waiting on old Nell. S- sorry, trying to roll through the combat tracker. It's not. Oh, here. Okay. There we go. Womp womp. <laughs> All right, uh, begin combat. You did better than uh, Tia. Yes. <laughs> oh, I forgot to change your character name on the character sheet there. That's all right. I still think your name is Win, right? You do for some reason. Okay. Okay. Good. I just wasn't sure if you like changed your name. Yeah, you would. You would know her as Win. All right. Uh, Mr. Terminator, you're up first. All right. Well, what do I see? Uh, the water is clear, uh, even though it's uh, dim light down here. Um, uh, you can, 
you can see uh, Olin swimming ahead of you gracefully through the water um, and a couple of shadow, shadowy figures uh, in further distance. I am going to uh, do a little magic tinker, tinkering while I'm walking along the bottom and uh, uh, make my finger uh, light up. All right. Uh, you have uh, a light source underwater. And I will move my full movement towards the, like, looking, f uh, well, I guess I'll investigate, looking for, you know, something that's going to explode. Okay. Um, you're walking along the bottom of the river, uh, looking around. Uh, you can give me a perception check at disadvantage. Okay. Booyah. Wow. Um, yeah, you, you, uh, you don't see anything, um, that you would think is an explosive device per se. Um, but the, the, the movement of the two shadowy figures in the distance does look suspicious as they're, uh, clearly doing something to the underside of the wall. Okay, well, I'm I'm beeline in for that. Okay, do you have uh, control of your token so you can move it? There. Uh, I'm not sure how far that was. Oh. oh, I see. Never mind. Give me a second. I think it was like right about there, wasn't it? Okay. Oh, was I like right there? Okay, I'll move one yeah. back. Okay. Okay, there. And that was like a move and a dash, so I think that's basically leads me with a bonus action. Okay. Oh, damn it. Okay. There. Yeah, I'm done. Okay, go ahead. All right, Deacon, it's your turn. All right. Uh, and I noticed these shadowy figures doing weird things under the dam. Uh, you definitely see some shadowy figures. Uh, I don't know if you noticed them doing anything. Uh, if you want to give me a perception check at disadvantage, you can. All right. Yeah, you're not able to make out any details. They're just kind of kind of off too far in the distance. But they are clearly like, are they are they humanoid? Uh, hard to tell at this distance. All right, then I will, uh, I will dash uh, after uh, weird na naked weirdo. Okay, uh, so you're moving <laughs> at, at, at half speed because uh, you're swimming, so you'll be able to move thirty feet total. And uh, just a question, I can't I can't do any more really this turn, but. Um, can I shoot my crossbows under underwater? Yes. Uh, I'll post the underwater like... combat rules. What was that, Jesse? Oh, I said I'm pull. posting the underwater combat rules. Uh, you can uh, yeah. attack, but you are going to miss if you fire at a target beyond the weapon's normal range. So how far do those uh, hand crossbows of yours shoot? Well, I also happen to have a heavy crossbow with a range of 400, so I can hit them at that, I think. Uh, normal range, so the maximum is oh, 100. Oh. So 100, yeah, sorry. yeah. And you're currently 120 away. Plus you yeah, used your action to dash. So Yeah, yeah. No, I, I know I couldn't. I just wondered if I would be able to shoot, that's all. Yep. Yeah, at some point you will. Great. Okay, then I uh, I'm done. Uh, that sea elf uh, is oblivious to you guys arriving. Uh, so focused in its work. Um, so it doesn't do anything other than what it's been uh, doing for a little bit now. Alden, your turn. I am going to move 60 using my dash to get there. So I'm basically just getting in his face and uh, not attacking because I can't. Uh, yeah, right at that close range, you can see that... Uh, the elves appear to be uh, drawing runes on uh, the bottom of the wall uh, with some kind of substance that uh, is resistant to water. And uh, they have um, a, a sheet that they're working from that has the, uh, the magical incantation written on it, and they're copying it uh, onto the stone. Good to know. Old Nell, um, swimming and holding your breath is going to be difficult for you because your uh, constitution modifier is negative. Um, so you are only able to hold your breath for 30 seconds, uh, which will be, is that five rounds? Five before rounds. You, yeah, before you start drowning. 
Yeah, tricky for the old guy, but he's determined to try and put his hand in and help. Uh, he is going to use his uh, movement and action to dash to try and get close to the action, which will take him about to where the ruler is showing. You have a swimming speed? Oh, heck no. Uh, sorry, half speed. Oh, yeah. 30. Yeah, old man cutting through the water. Um, that's my turn. Oops. Um, okay. Uh, so, well, this sea elf doesn't have to make a check because you are right beside it. Um, I'm in his face. And does an 11 hit? It does not. All right. Uh, so this sea elf has uh, abandoned uh, the runes for the moment and taken out its spear to attack, uh, but is not effective. And that means it's Wynn's turn. Win will swim. Okay. There, we're done. And back to the top of the order for round two. You have all been holding your breath now for six seconds. I feel like I can do this all day. <laughs> oh, wait, is it my turn? Yep. Oh, okay, sorry. I, I'm used to playing in my other game where we roll initiative every turn. So, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, no, yeah. that sounds like more work than it's worth. Yeah, that's fine. Um, okay. Uh, I will move just one second here. Can you measure for me? And then I'll just move it there. Thanks. Uh, I can go 60, can't I? Because I'm walking. Or is it difficult terrain? Uh, it would still be difficult terrain. Oh, then I cheated last turn. Oh. Yeah. So I'll just stay where I am. Okay. There we go. But I'll raise my fist ineffectually. Okay. Uh, Deacon, your turn. Yeah, all right. Uh, I will, again, just dash. Um, and I guess I'll just catch up to Naked Weirdo. And that'll be it. All right. The other uh, sea elf has now noticed uh, that they have company, um, but is uh, continuing to uh, draw the runes, uh, although maybe a bit more hastily than before. Holman. Since underwater makes casting challenging... I am going to pull out a dagger and try to stab this dude. Okay. Uh, you won't have disadvantage with that attack. Daggers are okay underwater. And I have a swim. It says uh, in the thing oh. they link, he's, he's in the thing he linked. It said uh, if you don't have a swim speed, and I do. Right. That hits. You stab the sea elf, and uh, blood starts to swirl in the water from the wound. Bring on the sharks, baby. River. <laughs> River sharks? Crocodiles? Maybe. Um, and, uh, probably a little too far north for their tastes. Anything else on your turn? Uh, no, that's it. All right, Old Nell. Uh, old Nell is going to continue swimming after I uh, move and then dash. Will you allow me a perception roll? Sure. Okay, so splitting the distance between the two, here comes a perception roll. Uh, is this dark enough that my perception roll wouldn't be at disadvantage? Or are we in direct sunlight and therefore I am a lousy drow? You're, you're not in direct sunlight right now. Here comes a normal roll. Oh, but it was worthless anyway. Um, I was trying to perceive what the two elves were up to. Like You described one of them as drawing runes, and I don't know if I would... I don't think that my perception roll is good enough to sort of prioritize that one. So, no. Okay, then that's my turn. Thank you. Olin, does a 16 hit? Sure does. Uh, that's not good. That's not right. What happened there? Uh, oh, rolled... I see. It's because it has two different types of damage, whether it's one-handed or two-handed. Uh, it is being used two-handed, so it'll be the D8. Which was, ooh, eight. All right, so you take eight uh, piercing damage as the sea elf stabs you. It, it rolled an eight? Oh, so there's no, it has no plus. Okay. No, yeah, it rolled a five and an eight. It gets no bonuses. All right, Win, you're up. I'm swimming. And done. Okay. We are on to round three. Everybody has been holding their breath for 12 seconds now. Shane, you're up. All right, here I go. I think I'm done. <laughs> okay. Uh, Deacon, you're up. All right. I am going to move uh, 15 feet. So my, And then I'm going to make a heavy crossbow attack 
against this uh, second one up here that's still drawing the runes. Okay. Sorry, I'm still new to this uh, online. I'm just looking for yeah. how to do it. No worries. Um, if you look in your character sheet, uh, there's a features tab. Or wait, that might just be the monsters. Let me check. No, there is. That's not it. It'll be either under inv- it'll be under your actions tab in D and D Beyond, or or if you're clicking directly in Foundry, you can click on your inventory, and that'll bring up for an action. Ah, yeah. perfect. Yeah, then you can just when you hover over the heavy crossbow, it'll give you a D twenty icon that you can click on. That is a hit. Excellent roll. But not great damage. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Less excellent damage. All right. Uh, so, yeah, you fire off your shot and uh, hit the elf. Anything else on your turn? That is all. Um, even though they're injured, uh, the elf is continuing to uh, finish up drawing the runes and completes their set of runes this turn. Shit. Alden, your turn. Was that the one that is away, the, the one further from me that finished that? Yeah. The runes that they're drawing, they are on the dam? Yes, on the underside of the stone wall. I am going to uh, try to, as an action, I'm going to try to wipe off. I'm going to try to affect the runes that he's drawing. Okay, and how are you going to try to do that? I am going to smear my blood all over it. Okay. Um, as you smear your blood over uh, the runes, you can feel that it has a very... Uh, the rune, the stuff that they're drawing the runes in has a very sticky texture to it. Um, and you're not really uh, uh, lifting it off the, the stone by smearing your blood on it. You're more getting... Uh, this sticky goo on your arm uh, where the injury is. My bonus action, I am going to healing light myself. Okay. All right, you got four hit points back. And that's my turn. All right, Old Nell, what would you like to do? Old Nell can see pretty good, and well, I mean, yeah, the one has finished its runes. His boy Ullman is in trouble, so he is going to swim up to the one that uh, is menacing Ullman. And uh, I've got 15 feet of movement, so here I come. And you get a knife in the neck, and you get a knife in the neck. Uh, would, would that give me a flank? It certainly does. So there's the action for the first knife. Wow, a 10. Great. Yeah, 10 is not enough. You miss. Bonus action. Here comes the other hand, also with a knife in the neck. Now, surely a 23. (laughs) Yeah, that'll do it. Okay, so uh, that rolled damage. It also gave me sneak attack damage. Eight damage total as I stab him in the neck. You kill that sea elf dead. And I just imagine as old Nell's turn ends that uh, he stabs it in like a great big bunch of bubbles just kind of flow out of his mouth and he is running out of air. That's my turn. All right. Uh, Win. Sorry, Tia, your turn. She keeps on trucking. Okay. She doesn't go very fast in water. Nope. Neither does the hero of the day, supposedly. The naked one. <laughs> Speaking of which, we're on round four. Everybody's been underwater for 18 seconds now, and it is the Terminator's turn. All right. Um, question for you, actually, before I commit to that. Um, how does a Warforge talk? Is it a speaker? Is said speaker affected by water? Um, yes. Oh, damn it. Yeah, you don't, you don't get to have verbal components just because you're a Warforged. Well, you know, I am willing to try to get an edge over my fellow man in any way, shape, or form I can. So, <laughs> screw you, nanner, 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 and my turn. Okay. Lol. <laughs> All right, Deacon, you're up. All right, I will just go ahead and take another shot. Okay, uh, I just have to look at something here. Yeah. Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, yeah. 
the Terminator is lower because he's on the bottom of the river, so I guess he wouldn't actually provide it cover. Yeah, okay, we'll uh, we'll let that stand, and you hit. And that elf dies as well. Nice shot. Thank you. Um, so the elves are now dead. Um, their bodies start to float south on the river, uh, along with the uh, waterproof pages that they had um, get swept away. Uh, and you guys, uh, well... The rest of you can hold your breath for a while longer yet, but uh, Old Nell is uh, potentially in trouble here. So I'm going to keep the combat tracker going until Old Nell either manages to get to safety or drowns. I am going to attempt to latch on to Old Nell and start swimming for all I'm worth. How would that work mechanically? Um... Probably poorly, because I have a nine strength. But people are very floaty in water. <laughs> um, yeah, but the nine strength thing, like hauling somebody else through the water. Um, Joke's on you, DM. My strength is six, so he beats me and can haul me easily. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you guys are just a pair, aren't you? Um, and I'm actually taking him north to the to the, the top rather than the bottom. Yeah, it is a fair bit closer going that way uh, against the current. But uh, okay, um, yeah, I don't know how to deal with this because you do have a swim speed. You're very you're very good in the water, but at the same time, you're not very strong. Um, I think how what about, I'll say. Sorry. No, you go ahead. Please continue. Uh, I'm I'm interested in hearing your idea. I was going to say, how about you put it to Mike that he has to give an athletics role? I, I mean, I think the DC would be challenging, so like a DC 15. And if he hits it, he can move me like equal to his speed. And if he can't, then I'm, I'm probably drowning before I get to the surface. Okay. Yep. I like the sounds of that. Um, Ullman, an athletics check, please. All right, you're trying to help, but uh, it's, it's pretty difficult, and you don't manage to make any headway on your turn. Um, not that it was your turn. Uh, Deacon gets some movement. Uh, yeah, true. I don't see them really moving away yet. So <clears throat> I'm going to uh, just move back the way I came. Okay, uh, so you got 15 feet of movement. And that's it. And then Ullman tries ineffectively to help Old Nell swim. Um, anything else on your turn, Ullman? When drowning happens, it's manifested in damage, right? Um, Heck no. 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 Uh, the, I go the, to zero HP and am dying. Yeah. It's, it's very awful to drown in D&D, as it is in real life. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm not doing anything else. Hey, I'm back. Sorry, my headphones turned off on me. Oh, that's weird. Back. Yeah, so just kind of sitting there, and I'm like, it's really quiet, and it's getting quieter and quieter, and I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> All right, uh, Old Nell, it's your turn. I mean, I think that Old Nell is like elbowing Olnen and pointing at the runes and pointing at the bodies, even while he desperately tries to swim to the surface. So... Move and dash. Try to head to that error, baby. And that's my turn. Okay. Uh, Tia. We'll try to go to the surface now. I'll kind of right in the middle of everything. Yeah. So might as well keep heading the same direction everybody else is. Okay. Okay. It's round five. Everybody's been holding their breath for 24 seconds now. Uh, and the Terminator's up first. Um... I go there, and I'd like to search the body, but does that take an action? Um, I don't know. I don't... Uh, searching the body in combat. Um, let me check. Okay. Because combat's basically done, but I guess... Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I suppose we got, we got the air thing to deal yeah, with. Yeah, we're still in the combat time frame, yeah. so... Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say it would take an action to do that uh, and do an investigation check. Okay. On next turn. Okay. 
And Deacon, you're up. I will uh, just dash and go 30 feet the opposite direction of everyone else. Okay. All right, Olin, it's your turn. Old Nell is far enough away from me. I'm going to heed what he said. I am going to swim over to the other rune work that was being done that was finished. Okay. And I am going to start scraping at it with my dagger. All right. Um, you uh, you start to scrape away at it, and uh, it does uh, break break the runes with the the edge of the blade uh, to the point that you can see stone uh, through the runes. Uh, it's it's not something that you can scrape off like easily and quickly, but you're certainly breaking um, the magical magical connection of the runes. Is the tar, tarry stuff that they were using when they were killed, is it floating around? Is it drifting downstream? Is it? Uh, yeah, it would be kind of sinking and, well, actually it's, yeah, the, the pots of stuff that they had been using would be uh, sinking and kind of flowing downstream a bit. Okay, now that I've ascertained that daggering it off will work, um, um, I guess I'm done for the my turn. Okay. Old Nell. Come on, Old Nell. And Tia. I'm a going. It's round six. Everybody has been holding their breath for 30 seconds. Terminator, uh, you wanted to search the body? I think it'll be at this point that he realizes that Tia has followed rather than because he really would have just assumed that she listened. <laughs> <laughs> um, he will grab the body and start making an intercept course towards her. Can you do that? Sure. So she's going to probably end up about there. I think that was it, right? Yeah. Okay. And Deacon? I will just continue to move. And that's it. All right, Olin. I am thinking. I am moving my dash to there. And that's your turn? Uh, I am going to, it won't do anything, but I am going to try to do a healing light to heal him 1d6 points of damage. And it's a bonus action, so I can do it on top of my dash. Okay. Um, so you're putting healing magic into old Nell? Yeah. Okay. I, I was resigned to my potentially dying. I, I someone else dying because of the choice I made kind of sucks. So, uh, yeah, he's trying to, he's trying. Okay. Uh, do you want to roll it? Okay. Um, so uh, that's your turn, old Nell. Uh, this is uh, you have you have started to drown. Um, and this. Uh, th- you dropped zero hit points and then got healed. So I'll say you get one more round of m- movement uh, while you're conscious. And you get right to the edge of the dam uh, before you run out of air. Tia, you're up. I'm a chicken. I'm done. Round seven. Uh, Terminator, what would you like to do? Um, oh, I miscalculated. Um... Can I grab her and move her like 20 spaces and then let her kind of like, just to kind of like speed her along? Uh, the issue with that is that she's swimming through the water above you and you're walking on the riverbed. Um, so right. it, she's not really in, in reach. Right. You're going to be all like 3D spatial on me. All right. <laughs> Then I will, keeping an eye on her, um, keep trudging along, dragging my elf friend. Okay. Yeah. Perhaps we can make soup with him later. Um. But yeah, that's it for me. Sorry. I uh, can I move. move. Sorry. Yeah, you haven't moved. Something like that, right? All right, Deacon. I'm just going to move, but it says I'm colliding with the walls. All right. Oops. Too far. There. Olman, uh, you can see ahead that uh, Old Nell just about got to the edge and then uh, went limp in the water. When he went limp, did he start to float? Uh, no. I miss when it had the uh, 
the distance trackers when you were moving your dude too. Yeah, me too. Um, but yeah, it's about 40 feet to him. So that would have been the 30, and he's still... Sorry, I just moved you across the wall there. So that took 40 movement to get there. And there's no way I can manu- try to start maneuvering him upward with my last 20 move I have with my dash? Yeah, you can uh, attempt the athletics check again. Nope. Okay. Old no. Um, because of your constitution bonus, you get one round um, without being able to breathe, uh, according to the rules that I read. Um, so when you, you run out of breath or are choking, you can survive for a number of rounds equal to your constitution modifier. So this is your one round of surviving. Tia, your turn. Feeling kind of useless here, but tracking? <laughs> Okay, I'm done. Round eight. Terminator, your turn. Alrighty. Um, how is she looking? That, like for she's she starting to look desperate. Nope. Okay. Then he'll continue. I don't know. Yeah, she has a plus one con modifier, so I think that gives her two minutes. Right about there, I think. All right, Deacon, you can get out from under the wall on the south side. There we go. And uh, I would just surface if I could. Yep, that's not a problem. And that's it, I guess. Okay, Olman, your turn. So with my plus two con, I have the capacity for another two minutes. Yep. I am going to attempt to give uh, Old Nell um, uh, CPR to get him some air well he's still under the dam i realize that this is this is trying to oh god okay yeah i will try again to athletics to get him up okay good luck nope all right old now i think uh we need some death saving throws now that's a success and tia it's your turn i'm chucking okay i'm done Okay. Round nine, Terminator. I think you have to get me by the wall. All right. Um, I should really just delete that. That's moved you 10. What do I see? Old Nell on the bottom, Ulrich uh, uh, struggling to pull him up or what? Uh, yeah, Ol- Olin, uh, or, sorry, Old Nell is starting to uh, drift down and Olin is struggling to, to get him up, yeah. Is there anything I can do to help? <laughs> uh, you could swim up and try the athletics check. All right. I'll do that. I'll leave the body down there. I can always get it later. Right? No, it, the current will take it away, right? Yeah. Yeah, the current will take it away. Like the other body, I haven't moved it, but it has started to drift. Okay. Um, it's one or the other, isn't it? Probably. Okay. I... Uh, let go of the elf and um, swim up to old Nell. Now, here's a question for you. Sure. I am a machine on the inside, so there's a certain amount of like air in space, right? And um, I'm co- completely like uh, enclosed in flesh, right? Um, would I have any air in me that like I could expel? I don't think so. Ah, damn it. See, I'm, I'm, I'm going for an edge. Good question. Yeah. All right. Uh, I swim up, grab him, and roll athletics. All right. Uh, You do manage to get Old Nell up and out uh, of the water, although he is uh, unconscious and unresponsive. And I think that's your turn. I think you're right. Because I don't think I have the capability of, like, giving him mouth to mouth. Nope. (laughs) The, The downside of not breathing all right, Deacon, uh, where are you headed? I am going to head towards the shore um, with the intent to, like, get up on the on the top of the dam and then see where the other people went. Okay. Uh, and okay. just just a note, sorry. I need to go put my boys in bed. I'll be listening, but uh, I'll just be, like, five minutes. Sure, no problem. Um, Omen, um, it's your turn. You can see that... Uh, the strange naked guy has uh, pulled 
old Nell up to the surface of the water. Am I able to get up there with just one, like with just my move? Oh yeah, no problem. I'm getting up there with just my move and I'm casting Cure Wounds on Nell. Okay. So old Nell gets eight hit points back and uh, starts coughing up water. So at this point, I think we can leave combat. Um, uh, just yeah? as an FYI, I'm going to go get that body. Oh, okay. Because, you know, my strange, weird, potential future friend has been dragging it along, and I can reach it next turn. All right, that sounds good. Yeah. Um, so you can go and uh, get the body and swim with that. Excellent. Uh, once old Nell is somewhat stabilized looking, I'm actually going under and I'm going to try to grab those, the waterproof papers. Oh, they're, they're long gone. Okay. Then in that case, I'm going to go under and finish destroying the, uh, the runes. Okay. No problem. Are the jars, are the tubs of stuff? Yeah, they didn't drift far. You're able to find those. Okay, so uh, my destroying the runes is going to be grabbing those and smearing it into basically I'm the runes are turning into painted chunk of of once I've done the the scratch through once I'm going to smear this tar what is I'll call it tar this tar over where the runes were just to make it a big black mass of covered rocks rather than any form of design in it. Sounds good. You effectively destroy the runes. And I'll do the the swimming out to catch my breath as long as it takes to go back under and breathe and to get it done. All right. So everybody manages to get to safety. Uh, some of you outside the walls of Nordgard and one of you inside. Um, so combat is uh, effectively over. Uh, what would you guys like to do? Uh, thank question mark for saving my life. And maybe find out a name. Uh, it is my 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 mission is to protect you from the future. Who sent you and what's your name? I don't know. I don't have a name. I don't need a name. I am just here to protect you from the future. So you don't know who sent you? Gnomes. That's all I know. I, I'm a gnome. I don't know very many of them, though. Well, they let's did, get out of the water. <laughs> they didn't tell me much, so I wouldn't affect the future other than to protect you from it. So you're from the past or the future? I'm from the future. A future. Well, maybe not this future. Hmm. A better future is what we're trying to achieve. I don't know. It doesn't compute. Well, we've got to call you something. All right. I will be known as something. <laughs> oh goodness! <laughs> <laughs> is not well, a usual name, is it? Something. It's not. Maybe we we could pick something you like even better. I am a robot. I do not like. I only protect. How about you be Sparky then? Sorry, Shane. Sparky, it is. <laughs> so, what do we do now? Are we safe now? Um, at this moment, I'm going to interject. Um, the knowledge to everyone else that Ulnan appears to have a passing resemblance to um, the bodies that we were just dealing with and uh, looks different than he did before he jumped in the water. Um, I don't think that would matter to my character. Uh, what What is your physique like? My physique? Yeah. Uh, kind of scrawny, but healthy. Um uh, what are you carrying for weapons? Uh, at the moment, two daggers. Okay. And, uh, okay. Um, what, what, the elf, is there any weapons left on him? Uh, they would have dropped the spear, uh, after they died. But is there, like, a belt knife or anything like that? No, no, the only thing that they had was a spear. Okay, well, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna search out a damn body. Okay. Um, not very well. I'll I'll search it too. That's not a good search. That wasn't me. That was me. Um, on the body, you find eighteen silver pieces, but no identification or no nothing like that. And no tools of his weird runes. Nope. 
and other than what uh, Ullman recovered at the bottom of the river, uh, the pots of like tarry substance. Okay, well, I think we should take this body to the guards and let them know that currently it's now safe. It is unfortunate. There is no uh, discerning marks on this man. I'm not sure how to track him to his his uh, co-conspirators. I think it's best that we go into hiding. A secluded log cabin in the woods would be the best. I, I, I can't hide. Your... I, I have to do. I have to do stuff. Ah, uh, not anymore. Now you sit and wait for your future. She starts giving him some really weird side eyes. Perhaps stepping away slightly. <laughs> Um, who else is there? Did, uh... Yeah, you guys will all get together again. Okay. Uh, at some point. Um, uh, when, um, what's, uh, his character's name? I'm gonna ask Alden if he knew this guy. I can't see a name for, oh, oh, I'm going... Deacon. Deacon? Deacon. Deacon? Um, your character, can, what does he look like? Uh, you ever played Overwatch? No, sorry. Uh, he's a cowboy. Okay. What about his stature? Uh, he's a uh, like he's he's uh about six feet tall, um, slim build but wiry. Probably bigger uh in stature than uh uh Ol- Olnick, Ol- Ulrich, right? Olnen, Ol- 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 Olnen. Sorry, I'll get this eventually. I would. Yeah, I don't know how tall Olnen is, but yeah, I get. I don't. Know. Pro- probably bigger than an elf. I'm thinking anyway. Uh, he will walk up to you and say, give me your clothes. Uh, just a second. So while this is all going on, I went out the backside. Can I get to the top of the dam right where I am there? Oh, I thought we had all gotten back together already. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, that was what I had been thinking was that some time has passed. You guys got back. Oh, okay. Uh, in, yeah. in the city and together. I like to okay. give me your clothes because that's going to go over so well. <laughs> yeah, it's Terminator without malice, but, you know. Uh, with authority, says, give me your clothes. I don't think so, partner. I need them to protect the girl. And I need them to protect my shame. Fine. We will have to find us some a guard. Is there guards around? Sorry. Um, yeah, when you guys get back into town, uh, there's, there's certainly guards. I am not going back into town yet. <laughs> okay. Because I am an aquatic elf, after just running around telling people that aquatic elves were going to blow up the dam, I don't suspect I would have a favorable interaction with people trying to get in. That's fair. Did you say whether you knew this guy? I'm going to surmise that I did not, Ryan. You didn't answer, or you didn't know him? No, didn't know, did, don't, do not know these guys. Um, hmm. High's bad. Nope, you you uh, don't know who this individual was. Nope. Well, I think we should take him to the guard. Let's go. Definitely the right thing to do. And yeah. she sets off assuming somebody's going to carry the body because she's not very strong. He's He'll reach down and pick it up, grab one like ankle and start dragging it to, after her. And its face is like banging across the ground. That seems reasonable. Yep. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, you guys get back, back into town, uh, with this dead body dragging behind you. Uh, what are you going to tell the guards at the gate? We were just talking to the guards on the tower, whatever you want to call it, the wall. And, and this is the threat. It's now been dealt with and they should be safe now. We think for now. I will walk up to him and say, your clothes, give them to me now. Again, Tia (laughs) will move slightly away from him. Do you, do you want to g- give a persuasion check there, uh, Sparky? How about intimidation? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, you, you, you need my, my, clo- my clothes? Um, uh, oh, okay. Uh, can, can we go into like the, 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 no. the barracks and I can change in there? He just yells over top of him now. Not uh, he, yells, but just he, like a authoritatively voice. He he runs away to the barracks. Oh no! 
I, he'll turn to the group and say, I need to get my clothes now and follow him into the barracks. Um, yeah, d- d- as strange as it is, uh, he, he brings you some clothes. Uh, not the clothes off his back, but um, he, he brings you some clothes uh, so that you can get dressed. I uh, I get dressed, and then I come out, and I look at his sword. Your sword. I need it to protect the girl. <laughs> um, you can't just have my sword. She'll turn to We'll get another sword, okay? We'll buy one. And she tries to lead him away. Tia isn't staying any longer. He'll allow himself to be let, left away and he'll say, it is more efficient for me to take his sword. But it's his. We leave people with their stuff. Uh, don't forget the body. He'll bend down and grab it by a wrist and drag it along. All right. You, you drag the body along. Where are you dragging the body to? To the guards where we found them on the wall and made them run away. Uh, so, um, you're dragging this thing all the way through town. Um, yeah. You're going to get some strange looks from people. She, she knows this is the right thing to do, so we're doing it. Okie doke. You know, how else are they going to believe us? I think at this point, old Nell would just kind of elbow Olden and say, like, um, lad, so, uh, this went a little bit pear shaped, but like, do you want to stick with these drongos or do you want to lot out? Well, technically, um, I didn't come into the town with y'all because I need my disguise kit and to redo my face. Oh, well, I wouldn't have followed without you. Yeah, you could, you could have time to do that uh, before going back into town. We have waited for that. That seems reasonable. And during that process, there will be a conversation about how I uh, didn't think it wise to walk into the capital and say, hi, I'm one of these people. People just like me are going to come in and destroy your dam. Um, I figured it would carry a little bit less weight then. And now that that act of terrorism has been averted, they are still obviously a threat. So, if it is the same with you all, I would like to continue my little subterfuge for the time being. Yeah, that seems reasonable. You didn't let them do this, so... It's all the same to me, partner. You've done a good deed today. I guess that that gets that back to an even keel. So, yeah, I am along for the ride with these folks. And, yeah, um, I'm sure there's going to be more to do with... This attack having been thwarted, I don't imagine my guide would be very pleased with me if I just walked away now. Well, and they have to keep watching so that that doesn't happen again. Speaking of, like, we did cause, like, a bit of a ruckus. Um, Is there any sign that people are, like, reacting to the fact that we yelled at them that they were all going to die? That a metal man, or rather a mysterious naked man stole a bunch of clothes like are we just prancing about free of contention or is there looks like there's people gathering to talk to us about this oh there's definitely uh you've drawn a crowd um like just the fact that you've got this body that you're dragging through the city streets um and yeah everything there are guards uh running ahead uh, or riding ahead i should say on horseback um and uh, they they have guards that are shadowing you through the streets. Uh, yeah, it, it's it, you've certainly gained some notice, and people are giving you a wide berth um, as guards ahead of you are uh, warning people uh, to get off the road, basically, because they're they're really not sure what to make of you right now. Well, when we get to the people who we explain this to and who know what's going on, it'll all be straightened out. So, all good. Who is that? The ones that we told to get off the the wall because it was going to blow up. Then we'll just say, and here's where. So, it's all good. Yeah, where are they? I'm not sure, but I figured they should be somewhere near the wall. Where our cart is. Well, seeing as, she, seeing as this gnome has all the answers, I guess I'll just fall in line and try to cover my appearance again under my cloak. Okay. Um, yeah, so you guys, uh, 
Well, you don't make it all the way to uh, the river wall. Uh, you get to about uh, the middle island there with City Hall. And then do we see and, some of the guards we saved? Um, no, you you run into the, uh, well, the, the guard that uh, Ullman spoke to at first outside City Hall who pointed you in that direction. Um, and he looks at the, the dead body that uh, is being dragged behind you um, and says, uh, word reached us of... Uh, uh, the dam was supposedly exploding, but uh, it doesn't appear that anything happened. Um, what's his story? And he kind of juts his chin out at the, the dead body. He was... I, um. I will lift it up so that everybody can see it better. He was making runes underwater on the dam. It didn't blow up, but you guys should really keep an eye on the underwater because seems like that's a problem. Here you go! And our problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, you drop the body, and uh, the guard looks uh, disgusted and confused, um, but thanks you for there's, your good work. There's, there's another one floating downriver somewhere. There were two of them. You'll want to figure out how to patrol underwater, because uh, you don't want them to do that and succeed. It would be bad. Of of course, um, we'll have to. Can, perhaps you could bring this news to the council, and they could discuss options. Oh, I'd love to talk to the council. Um, excellent. You can leave the body here. I'm sure they don't need to see that. Uh, we'll dispose of it. Okie dokie. Is our Terminator dressed by now? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, she'll cheerfully go to the council. Okay. Um, when you get inside, uh, it's not the full council that greets you, um, but there are there are a few councillors that are uh, at this, the council chamber. Is it pretty quickly after we're told to go meet with the council that we do meet with them? Like, for instance, an hour doesn't pass. No, no. It, 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 that's why not everybody is here because uh, they don't have any real warning that you're coming. Um, uh, so the people uh, that you find uh, in the council chamber, uh, there's an orc wearing uh, heavy plate armor. Um, and uh, a gnome who wears uh, flowing robes. And a halfling um, also wearing armor. And to, are we introduced at all? Even as these are the people who just drag, drag the body <laughs> through the city and say they saved the dam from blowing up? Yeah, sorry. I'm just rearranging my notes a little bit here. Um, so I've got all the names of the people in order and easy to find. Um, yes, uh, you are uh, introduced to the three counselors. Um, and uh, are allowed to, to make a statement as to uh, what's been going on. So is anybody going to speak up? Or are you guys going to let Tia speak up? You've led us up this far. Like you're, you're in front, and I think we're all just kind of hiding behind you as best as we can. Uh, um. Um, so anyway, the, the, these dudes, well... We brought one of the bodies, the other one floated down river. We're trying to blow up the dam underwater, and you should really, really patrol there more often. And anyway, um, have you guys seen the sword um, from, I don't remember Yusmir's last name's line. Orduna. The Orduna line lately? Um, the three counselors look at each other strangely um, before the orc turns to you. And uh, and says, thank you for your service in defending Nordgard. Uh, as for the lost sword, uh, that was many years ago that it disappeared. Uh, Tarek is, as usual, not here to address your concerns directly. Uh, 
on behalf of the Orduna line. Um, but uh, I imagine you would be able to find him uh, somewhere in the city enjoying the harvest festival, he says, in kind of a an unimpressed tone. What kind of boots is he wearing? Oh, goodness! The, the orc? Yeah. Uh, solid uh, leather boots that uh, come up halfway up his calf. Do they look like they'd fit? Um, they would probably be a little big on you. Okay, never mind then. <laughs> uh, the the gnomish counselor comes forward and says, D -d 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 I, I, I'm sorry, uh, on, on behalf of the council, uh, my name is uh, Bolinius Teep. And um, you say that the dam is in uh, further danger. Uh, this is, uh, is terrible news, of course. Um, there, there has been um, stories of, uh, in the histories and, and archives, uh, of that uh, that river wall uh, being being used uh, for for magical purposes of uh, uh, freezing the, the river solid instantly. Uh, I've never actually seen it happen. Uh, alas, the, uh, the the magics that allow that to happen have been lost to time. Um, but uh, uh, we, uh, the, I'm certain that we can find other uh, solutions to uh, protecting the space uh, underneath the wall if if there are indeed these these terrible threats. Um, uh, uh, I, I would be happy to to read through the archives and. Uh, see what uh, what we can decide on. Yeah, you should definitely make sure you have somebody who can swim go down there and check it out regularly. Well, there, there are certainly uh, w wizards uh, in the city who work and uh, I believe uh, cast spells to breathe underwater. So we will uh, look into this and, and uh, come up with some some sort of defensive solution. Um, we are certainly in your debt. Uh, is, is there anything that uh, that we could provide you uh, in, in way of thanks uh, from the city? I could use some boots and a sword. Uh, he looks at you curiously and says, uh, it, "Yes, that that uh, should not be a, a problem at all. Uh, we we are happy to provide those to you." Do you have any? Um... I need information on that that sword that we were discussing. Do you have anybody that I could talk to other than Terence, who who is not currently present, or, or resources for how to track it down? Um, you could uh, go to the Orduna Manor, uh, which is uh, just, just south of City Hall, uh, on on the next island over. Um, uh, there may be other Ordunas there who uh, could provide you with information. If uh, you are unable to find Tarek, uh, um, the, the story is uh, fairly well known amongst their family, uh, what happened. So, uh, yes, you could, you could uh, certainly in inquire there. Okay, thank you. And she'll push her still wet hair out of her face and um, more or less turn and leave. <laughs> no, wait, she's, got a, she's a little bit more with it than that. She'll say thank you. Did you need anything else before I go depart on that task? Um. Be begging your honor's pardon, we're all new to this city and, uh, you know, uh, some general provisions or hard currency wouldn't go amiss. And if you could maybe give us a map or a little list of what we might find looking about, that that, that would be a great help. Um, uh, uh, certainly. And uh, Bilinius looks to his uh, fellow counselors and he's like, Sim does anybody have any money? And uh, they dig around and uh, uh, they they put pull together seven gold pieces uh, that they can give you uh, immediately. And uh, they say, uh, yes, th th this is uh, the money. And um, I I'm certain that we have a map of the city uh, somewhere. Um, uh, just uh, give us a moment to, to track one down. That seems like a smart idea. Okay. Um, does anybody else make any requests to the council? Uh, a place to stay. Um, they uh, talk amongst themselves and say that 
Uh, most of the inns in town are full um, because of the Harvest Festival and everybody coming in. Um, but one of the counselors who isn't there at the moment um, has some holdings, uh, and or not some holdings, uh, some clout with the Lock and Key Inn. Uh, so they may be able to uh, find you a room or two there. Which counselor is that? Um, that would be Felania Sunbeam. Could are, are we given a brief description of her race, responsibilities, appearance? Like, who is Felania Sunbeam, even if she isn't there right now? Um, Felania is uh, an el- the elven counselor. Um, she's an academic with... Um, who rarely attends council, only if needed. Um, she's usually off uh, reading reading books. Um, not not a whole lot of interest in uh, what's going on in the city most of the time. Cool. Thank you very much. And before we go, could I ask for the name of the orc and the halfling? Uh, yes. Uh, the orc is, uh, introduces himself as Torgan Feyfriend, and the halfling is, introduces herself as Harley Stout. That made me pleased. <laughs> I'm grinning over here. Um, <laughs> me too. Do, do they do they speak to any of their uh, like their their interests or, or activities as counselors while while discussing things, or is just do we just get their names? Um, if you want to uh, discuss things with them further, uh, they're happy to talk about their role uh, and their roles in the city. Um, Torgan uh, says that uh, his main interest is maintaining unity um, in the city between the orcs and the other races. Um, it's grown uh, difficult lately. Uh, there's tension there, uh, mostly because of the Flesh Reaver clan that uh, has been uh, amassing power in the north, and so people are uh, a little bit jittery about that. Um, they're they're trying to keep uh, keep the knowledge uh, contained, but there are whispers amongst the people, and uh, it's been. More difficult for orcs and those with uh, even uh, half orc bloodlines uh, recently in the city. Um, Bolinius is a, a traditional sort uh, who is looking for uh, fiscal responsibility in the city. Um, he very clearly is one of those types that looks to the good old days. Um, of years past and uh, kind of drags his feet on uh, progressive change in the city. And uh, Harley Stout is a halfling counselor, also uh, right-leaning, and is concerned with uh, the defense of the kingdom and maintaining a strong uh, military might in the north. Myself and my notes, thank you. Mine too. You're welcome. I'm still waiting for my boots and my uh, sword. It, they, yeah, they uh, they send a runner out and uh, bring you boots that uh, that fit well and uh, provide you with a long sword. Well, Excellent. of that of that seven gold, uh, I'll distribute one gold to each of you. So everybody add a gold to your inventory, and I'm keeping three for myself. <laughs> It's all right. I kept the 18 silver I found in the dude's purse earlier. <laughs> Not really in a selfish way, just it was there. I was there. Look, man, I had zero hard currency. I, I need this three gold, please, and thank you. All good. <laughs> you have problems. I started off with nothing. <laughs> I told you we'd buy you a sword, but we got you one now, so we're good. Okay. Uh, so are there any other requests of the council while you're here? And they do bring you uh, a map of the city uh, eventually. Olman will make a point of saying something along the lines of, um, if there's anything else that comes up that, um, he just speaks for himself, 
uh, anything else that comes up that I'm able to be of assistance, please reach out to us and let me know. They uh, thank you again very much for your service and uh, uh, we'll keep you in mind for the future. Do they cool. seem surprised by this? By which? The attack on the city. Um, yes, uh, there. Um, you, you would you would definitely note that people are surprised that there was a, a, an attempt made on uh, the river wall um, because it's never in living memory come under attack before. Okay, that's good knowledge. I, I think Old Nell would like maybe elbow Deacon and just mutter if he maybe wants to ask them about the the bloke he's looking for. Yeah, I know Mark said he had to leave for a minute there, um, so he might not be here right now. Sorry, I was just coming back. I, I, I oh. missed what you asked him. I only heard the first half of that. Yeah, you came in pretty quiet there, Mark. No, sorry about that. Uh, I was just coming back, and I missed uh, the question. Uh, so we're in front of the council. We've gotten a little bit of a pat on the back, and... Uh, Shane got some boots, so bully for him. Uh, ba ba basically, while they've been giving us a little bit of information, uh, you would have been asked like, by the party if you maybe wanted to check in about any of the people that you're looking for. Uh, and I think I heard we were going to the Lock and Key Inn, right? That is a place that was recommended to us as being affiliated with one of the town councillors. Right. Uh, no, I'm good. I think I'll do my looking at the inn. Okay. Then nothing from my side. Last chance anybody would speak up or forever hold your peace. All right. You guys leave the council chamber. And where are you headed next? We're all going to pile into our cart and start heading for the inn, unless anybody has any objections. Oh, I do need to go to the Orduna Manor sometime soon. Ah, uh, That's kind of on the way, I think, because we're heading south. And the Orduna Manor is... is south. Directly south of us, yeah. That's perfect. Yep. Yeah, you can certainly uh, take the directly uh, south road across the islands, um, which will bring you to the Walk and Key. Um, so uh, by this point, you guys have been doing uh, a fair bit of walking. You're about midday uh, as you start making your way south. Do we pass the Orduna Manor first, or? Uh, yes, you would. Um, you uh, you get down to the uh, first island and you see an opulent opulent mansion um, created with uh, older uh, style of architecture. Uh, there are guards outside uh, the gates and uh, there's sprawling grounds that are all fenced off um, and a, a huge manor house in, uh, in the distance. So Ryan, I need to ask you a question. Okay. Well, I'm sending it to you. Oh. It's not a question for everyone else's ears, eh? Not quite. Okay. Um, so she'll walk up to one of the guards. Okay. Um, they stand at silent attention um, and kind of look over your head. Uh, hello? Hello, I'm down here. Um, he coughs a little bit, looks down. Says, um, yes, uh, how can I help you? Hello, the council suggested that there might be somebody at the Orduna Manor, one of the Ordunas that I could speak with. Would you know if that's possible, please? Um, I believe that all of the Ordunas are out uh, at the moment. Uh, can I take a message? Well, maybe you might know something about this. Can you tell me how, how the sword that the Ordunas had went missing? They said it's a fairly well-known topic. Uh, yes, I, I am not permitted to speak of, uh, that time in our house's history. You're not permitted to? How come? Uh, it is a, uh, contentious topic. Uh, still, even though it was ages ago, uh, many bad feelings remain. Who would be the best Arduna for me to talk to about this? Um... <sighs> Uh, as it is his uh, duty to represent the family, uh, likely Tarek uh, or Duna would be uh, the one to speak uh, to. Uh, 
the best place to find him would be in the council chambers uh, north of here. We just came from there, and he, they said he was out celebrating. Uh, give me an insight check. Can others toss in for this? Uh, yep. Oh, it was almost a natural 20, and then it shifted to a 2. How about a dirty 20? A dirty 20 is good. Um, Olin and Old Nell, uh, even though Tia misses it, uh, you guys uh, see his lip kind of twitch at the mention that he's out celebrating uh, before he says, uh, yes, of course. Uh, well, uh, I, I certainly wish you luck in tracking him down then. A lip twitch indicating contempt? Uh, y- yeah, like, it's like, you get the feeling that this isn't the first time that this guard has heard of uh, Tarek being out in his cups. So he's the one that's most likely to be responsible for it, but that doesn't mean he'd be the best person to talk to. Who'd feel the most comfortable? I don't believe any of them would be comfortable speaking about this topic with strangers. Oh, I'm not strange at all. Um, we just helped save this, the, the city from being blown up. We're very normal. I'm sure you did. She, does she pick up on that? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you don't want an insight check again? Yeah, the guard seems uh, fairly dismissive. Thank you for your time. She knows enough to know. Thank you for your time. We'll, we'll attempt to find uh, Lord Terrence in town. Would you happen to know his favorite establishment for celebration? Um, well, generally speaking, uh, he goes to the Gilded Snowflake. Uh, but uh, whether he's there to celebrate harvest, I, I find doubtful. Uh, most people are out in the streets celebrating. Thank you so much. And she'll give him a fairly genuine smile there. Okay. Okay. So she will continue traveling with the rest of the group towards the inn. Okay. Um, So you guys head down uh, the road and across another bridge. Are are there any nameplates or such um, on the, any of the nobles manners that we are passing? heading towards that bottom bridge. Yes. Um, One of them belongs to uh, Sunbeams, and another belongs to the Woodsworth family. Uh, But there's also a tower um, that's uh, to the south, southeast of you guys uh, in blue, uh, darker blue. Uh, that appears uh, overrun with uh, vegetation and uh, looks deserted. Can you ping on the map where that is? Did you oh. Did you see the ping? Yeah, sorry, I had to really zoom in. I did not. It's on the island with three. Ah, thank you. Yeah. All right, uh, so you guys continue on. And uh, once you're back on uh, like the mainland or whatever you want to call it, um, you can see uh, to the north of uh, where you guys are right now, um, there's what looks like a temple. And uh, to the east directly is an uh, inn, uh, which is the lock and key. There is a lock and key. We should establish a base of operations. It sounds pretty reasonable. Do they have a stable that we can park the cart and the, or the wagon and the mules with? They do. I thought I had created... I must have created the map and then not actually put it in. Uh, I'll share it on Discord. Oh, I didn't even download it from Incarnate. Oops. Anyway, we don't, uh, we don't really need the map. Um... But yeah, there, there's a stable out back, um, and uh, when you uh, head in, there's uh, like a, a valet-type service where they, they offer to take your, your wagon and, and mules uh, to the stables. Um, there's a lot of tables for dining. You can see that the place is full. Um, 
a lot of people celebrating. Drinks are flowing freely. There's a stage set up uh, kind of in the middle of the room uh, with a bard uh, playing music softly to entertain. Uh, there's a, a patio out back and then a hallway uh, just past some kitchens that uh, take you to where the rooms are. Well, all right. I guess we will, like, if we drop the counselor's name that, that we were given as being affiliated with this, if we drop Filiana Sunbeam's name, um, can we, like, you know, get get a room comped? Um, you go up to the bartender, and um, I don't have a name generated yet. Uh, anyway, uh, the bartender says... She, it, he t- takes a look at you and it kind of does a double take uh, and then says, Oh, uh, is, is, is there a problem, Master Sir? Who are they saying that to? To old Nell. May I make an insight roll? Yep. Wow, my insights have been on fire. Um, his uh, demeanor has become uh, what you'd call almost reverent um, as he, he kind of lowers his, his gaze from yours and speaks in hushed tones. Still speaking common? Yep. Old Nell's going to let that concerning feeling go past and is just going to say, uh, need some rooms, need stabling, need food, need baths. Um, and of you're course. putting it. At, oh, go ahead. Of of course, anything you want, Master. Anything. Um, is Filiana Sunbeam around? Uh, n- no, Master. No, uh, she's she's not here. Uh, well, this this is. It. And he he leans in really close and whispers, uh, just for you to hear. Um, he says, "This is this is very outside protocol, Master." Uh, what what brings you to the surface uh, via this route? Um, old Nell is feeling like just panicked and out of his depths because he doesn't have a hot clue what this guy is talking about, but he feels he ought to. So um, he he is simply going to like raise his eyebrows and say archly, "Is that your place to be asking?" <gasps> Uh, no, Master. No, I'm sorry. I'm so, I'm so sorry. Uh, here, here, and he he goes and and pulls a couple of keys uh, out of a chest and, and hands them to you, and and says, uh, "I'm so sorry, Master. Uh, here, of course, keys. Enjoy, enjoy your rooms. Uh, anything you want. Uh, uh, just let me know. Oh, I'll talk to the kitchen directly and and get you anything that you need. We need a room to talk in privately." Yes, you you can speak privately in in those rooms uh, that I gave you the keys for. No, like a meeting room. Oh, I'm I'm sorry, we don't have th- those types of uh, uh, of rooms available. All right then. And I think old Nell, like now, just feeling incredibly panicked, is going to just sort of say thank you. That'll be all, mate, and uh, is going to just sort of like give the party like the please follow me right now eyes and try and lead us all to the rooms that we've now reserved apparently on the way up to the rooms uh tia will say so who are you <clears throat> well let's uh let's talk about that in our rooms sheila if you please Sheila, <laughs> sure and we're, we're all gonna cram into a room yep it's uh it's a bit of a tight fit for five, but not uh, super uncomfortable. Um, I just assume he's carrying around a bear sword right now. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to get to a room. Old Nell is going to uh, ease himself down on the bed, like throw off his still probably a little bit damp cloak. And uh, sitting before you guys, like for any of you that hadn't really been at pains to catch it before, uh, he's a dark elf. He has black ashen skin. He, he's very advanced in age. He's got a lot of lines on his face. Um, his ears display like a lot of little pox and marks from where you assume he once had a ton of piercings in them. Uh, his hands are bleached a very light color, presumably from some sort of burns or exposure to chemicals. 
uh, he has a very, very thin build, like uh, like almost a, an emaciated skeletal kind of build. And uh, now that he's sort of the center of attention, you all kind of like, you know, despite how quick and and fluid his movements have been, like he he doesn't look terribly well. Like he his breathing has a bit of a wheeze to it, and he just sort of looks like out of sorts. And uh, he's gonna say, "All right, um, y'all seem like a." Like a right proper crew of of decent folk, we uh we had a right Barney out there under the dam, and we we all came through. So if uh, if we're all going to be working together, then I'm just going to tell you uh, the facts about me, and that'll be your chance to to scarper if uh, you don't like what you hear. But um, honestly, I'm feeling a little bit nervous right now based on that bloke's reaction downstairs. So my name is Old Nell. I uh, I was born in the woods, a great deal north of here, a couple of months ago. I uh, I remember waking up. I remember being alone and being sick, being being ill beyond all belief, and stumbling, crawling, moving about in pain as best as I could. I I found myself in the light. It was blinding to mine eyes, and as I was desperately trying to find anything, shelter, sustenance, help, I came to a giant oak tree where I met a, well, I call her the angel in the woods. She's a, a beautiful, beautiful lady. Uh, her skin was was dark. Her, her eyes were like inf- looking into the night sky. She had wings that that i think were made of vines or leaves and she held me in her arms and and commanded me to be well and with her words she she healed my wounds and eased my pains um after that she she kitted me up gave me the the wagon and the mules and sent me south told me to seek the great city of nordgard and and bade me to do good and uh I really don't know much time before that, but I mean, look at me. And uh, he's just sort of like holding up his hands. I'm pretty sure I'm what's called a, a dark elf. And I don't really know much of what that means other than I I think that the people who look like me are, are nasty folk that don't do th- good things. And the way that bloke downstairs reacted, he clearly thought that I, I was somebody that I really don't think I am. So. Now I'm nervous. I shouldn't have shown my face like that. I was careless after the fight. But uh, I'm worried that us staying here is going to be a risk of some sort, of, of what I really don't know. This is all moving very strangely. Well, that's an interesting tale. If it puts Wynn in danger, then we need to move now. Are, are Dark Elves, like, well-known as evil in this world? Sorry, I, I don't really know the backstory there. Fair question. Um, Dark elves aren't typically known uh, at all. Um, They don't really interact with the surface world um, that anybody's aware of. So I haven't heard of it either. Um, Give me a history check. I'm just going to assume I have no clue what a dark elf is or any. Yeah, that's fair. I'm not quite sure why I'd added the D4. Uh, because it's drawing on your ability to use your calligraphers tools uh, automatically. Uh, thank you. Oh, um, yeah. So I'm going to say that you don't. Sounds good. Well, where can we be safe for Win? It's important that Win stays safe. How come? Like, good. Yes. Because that is what I am programmed to do. Oh, the scalings on this all is really off. Oh my God! Somebody cast enlarge on Old Nell. <laughs> right. I like it. I'm just laying around my entire room. Like when I lay around the house, I lay around the house. <laughs> Literally around it. Uh oh, what happened there? It, it just my time. it just disappeared. <laughs> I see it. I see it. It's nighttime. Oh. I'll just bring it back here. I'll get that sorted out later. It doesn't really matter for now. All right. Uh, so, what would you guys like to do now? We have to find a new place. That's safe for the Dark Elf, Enwin. Are you planning on doing... Like, he doesn't seem to be too dangerous. But he says it's dangerous here. 
No, nah, he just doesn't know what he what's dangerous. I'd say we just stay right here until something goes wrong. Um, Sparky looks at uh, at Wynn after he says that. Yeah, it seemed like maybe we're okay here. That guy seemed pretty, almost reverent. Yeah, that was creepy. A little bit. A little bit. I won't argue that. <clears throat> He's This guy's hard to play. Because <laughs> I'm hard. It's hard to, like, volunteer stuff. And I think right now, none of us know our characters or how we fit together well enough, so. Yeah, that too. <laughs> I've been struggling a bit too, yeah. Yeah. All I know at this moment for me is we were all brought together in this city. I don't much believe in coincidences, and I know as far as why I was brought here, I'm certain that that's not done. Them failing to do that, um, I can't see them not trying again. There's a knock at the door. Deacon will go over to the door, uh, look at everybody else, and, and like, like, should I open it? I think so. Um, old Nell has pulled out a pair of knives and is sort of like giving everybody SEAL Team 6 hand motions, like get yourself ready and prepare to start blasting. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ready one of my hand crossbows and uh, and say, "Who's there?" It's Minori. Uh, I hear Dad sent me to to see if I can get you anything from the kitchen. I'll crack the door open just a little bit so I can see who who it is. Uh, you see uh, a a waitress uh, that you saw earlier in the the main dining area. Uh, serving tables. I'm going to look back at the group and say, well, y'all hungry? Yeah. I do not need to eat. Well, that's just boring. Well, I'll take a steak if you got one. Um, we have a, a roasted mutton. Um, we have a stewed sausage and boiled goose. Well, that mutton sounds mighty fine. What about the rest of you? You think that'll be good? Sure. And I'll, I'll order the mutton for the, the group. Okay, she uh, she bows, um, or sorry, curtsies, and uh, makes her way quickly away from the room. I'll just uh, close the door and lock it if that's possible. Yep. We might have to eliminate her. Um, what? <laughs> we do not know the, everything that she heard. We, we need to get some ground rules straight. We're not killing lots of people here. She just asked us if we want food. This is not a good plan. He'll just kind of look at you blankly, like he's not really processing. <laughs> okay, so no killing people unless they're trying to kill us, okay? Okay. Okay. But <laughs> what if she tries to poison you? Well, if we find out that's true, then we can deal with that then. Okay. So you, pointing at Sparky, are here to protect her, right? That's right, Win. Um, Tia, Tia, and she is, call me Tia. And she's glaring daggers at you. <laughs> All right. The Sheila has a secret identity she'd rather we not know. Check. Are you? Do you have to obey her orders or anything? I'm dying laughing here from this. <laughs> yes. As part of my directives, I have to follow her orders to the T. Oh, God. <laughs> and Tia kind of perks up at that, actually. <laughs> All right. Mystery gnome lass, you uh, you just kind of appeared out of nowhere, and you're looking for a magic sword or something. What's your deal? Um, I came to Nordgard, and I'm looking for a magic sword. Why? I think you you've got it of... summed up right there. Why'd you appear out of thin air? Oh, I didn't appear out of thin air. No, no, I'm pretty sure that one can't do that. Actually, um, yeah, I'm not sure how one would just appear out of thin air. Uh, so no, no, I just arrived in Nordgard, and I am, in fact, looking for a magic sword. Do you know anything about it? I didn't even know my own name a few weeks ago. Right, but in the last few weeks, have you seen a magic sword? Dunno. Have you met anybody who goes by the name of uh, Wynn? I have not met anyone that goes by the name of Wynn. But you're Wynn. Call me Tia! I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to direct the question at at uh, Sparky and say, uh, how do you know her name is Wynn? Her name is Tia. <laughs> then why were you calling her Wynn? I am not. Her name is Tia. 
he can just gonna roll his eyes and, and say, "Okay, Sheila, it is." <laughs> she, she is dying. And you, Deacon, you're a bounty hunter. After we find this this bloke you're looking for, this this Bruce by the name of Shades, was there anybody else on your little kill list? No, not exactly. I just uh, have been roaming around looking for him. I just happen to be good at killing, so I take on jobs as I as I find them. Why are you looking for him? He do you wrong? Indeed, and that's a bit of a personal subject. We have a time traveling mystery man. We have a gnome with many names. We just found out that I'm apparently royalty around here, and Olnen is a right nice bloke. Completely normal Bruce, nothing going on unless he likes, wants to say it at his own self. But um, if we're going to be hanging out together, maybe your vendettas and enemies aren't quite as much a personal matter as, as they're everybody here's business. What I... you say, mate? You killed my brother. Oh, well, that's not nice. Not, it was my fault, too. You want to elaborate as to why he did it? Yes, he couldn't take losing a card. What were the stakes in, in this card game? Only money. I only played at cards to get away from the farm. My brother followed me there. One night, I beat this man Shade, and uh, I turned around to leave, and he, he fired a, a blast at me. My brother stepped in the way to save me. Oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. Well, hopefully one of these days I'll get to resolve that. And Deacon just kind of puts his back up against the wall and crosses his arms. And he reaches into his pocket to try and, uh, and he pulls out a cigar and he tries to light it and he realizes that it's soaking wet and he just throws it on the ground and looks down. All right. I think we've got a, a rough idea where everyone is, is standing here, even even the mystery gnome lady. Um, oh, I am not mysterious. I am just a gnome who is looking for a magic sword. So if you told the big guy to tell the truth about your identity, I'm sure he'd have nothing to say other than your name is Tia. You know, I've never met him before today in my life. I have no idea what he would say about me. Uh-huh. Anyway, are we all thinking we're looking to work together for a little bit into the near future? we we'll be a crew, watch each other's backs? I think so. We all seem to be a little adrift. And to be honest, the city's a little different than I was expecting. I think the odds of survival increase with numbers. As long as we're clear on the clear on the on the plan is to protect, not win Tia. Very subtle. Very subtle. <laughs> Just stick your head. Well, I reckon I'm in. At least it's not gonna be boring. And at that point there's a knock on the door. Knives back out. Seal team six go. I'll answer. Um Minari is there, um, and she has uh, several plates of mutton. Um, there's, uh, also some bitter cheese and, uh, tankard of mead, uh, with each plate. Uh, so you guys have all you need. And she says, uh, uh, thank you, masters. Um, uh, it's on the house. Well, much obliged. I will take them and, uh, distribute them around the room. All right. She, uh, as soon as... As soon as you take the last of the food, she just makes a beeline out of there. The whole time she's there, my character is, like, staring her down. That might be part of the reason why she left so fast. Not aggressively, but intensely. Yeah. Seems to me that doesn't change that response. Nope. All right. Are we going to stay here for the evening and set to tomorrow? I think that sounds like a good plan. What are we going to do tomorrow? I need to find Tarek, and we need to find a red-headed dude for you, and she'll point um, to our poor poor brother. And you guys want to do good. I'm not really sure what we need to find for you. Well, I reckon we should follow up on maybe some of this uh, watery elves business. That's probably a good plan. I think maybe, maybe tomorrow we could look for uh, this Liliana Fluff, the guard captain or some such. If you want to talk to that Tarek, he is out in partying right now. He may be most approachable when he has been socially imbibing. That actually sounds like a good plan. All right, so we're not going to post up here yet. We're going to go out and try to find this Orduna. If you guys are open to it. 
sounds good to me. Okay. Um, so we are going to wrap up soon because uh, it's getting late. But uh, just as a last teaser, uh, you guys finish up your meals and head out into the partying uh, atmosphere around town. Uh, it begins to get dark as you make your way through the streets trying to find Tarek. And uh, the darkness is suddenly illuminated by bright flashes above. And it draws all of your attention up to the night sky where you see several uh, meteors streaking through the sky. Everybody in town around you is looking up at them and pointing and going, ooh, ah. But those expressions of wonder and awe begin to turn to fear as the lights streak further and further down. They're not burning up in the sky. They're going to make landfall. And three of them are coming directly at Nordgard. Oh, no. What the hell? Does Ooze have intercontinental ballistic missiles? What the hell, indeed. <laughs> Vert or Firk? As you watch, um, you're not really anywhere close to where any of the three land. Uh, but you see one lands in the west end on the other side of the stadium. Uh, one lands on the, the eastern side of town. And one lands... Um, kind of in the south. And uh, there's no huge explosions or anything, um, but it is something that is certainly of interest, and maybe you'll want to investigate next time. I would say so. Dun-dun-dun, indeed. Thanks for the cliffhanger. My pleasure.